Have you ever pondered on the role of 18th century British periodicals in shaping society? Indeed, these publications played pivotal roles in informing, educating and shaping public opinion during that era. They were the social media of their time, sparking conversations and debates that shaped the political, social and cultural landscape of Britain. First in our lineup is The Tatler, which graced the public from 1709 to 1711. It was closely followed by The Female Tatler, a thrice-weekly periodical that ran from July 1709 to March 1710. These publications opened the floodgates to a new era of print media. In the footsteps of The Tatler came The Spectator, founded by Joseph Addison and Richard Steele. It was published daily from 1711 to 1712 and then thrice a week in 1714 for six months. Even after its run, it remained popular when collected in book form. Vetusta Monumenta, an illustrated antiquarian paper, was published at intermittent intervals by the Society of Antiquaries of London, starting in 1718 and continuing until 1906. It was a beacon for lovers of history and antiquity. We then have the Intelligencer, launched by Jonathan Swift and Thomas Sheridan in 1728. It was followed by The Plain Dealer, a bi-weekly periodical founded by Aaron Hill, which ran from 1724 to 1725. The Gentleman's Magazine graced the scene from 1731 to 1907, published monthly. It was closely followed by The London Magazine, which ran from 1732 to 1785, and The Bee, founded by Eustace Budgell from 1733 to 1735. Lloyd's List, a weekly, then semi-weekly periodical, began in 1734 and is still in circulation today, making it one of the longest-running periodicals in history. Fast forward to 1744, The Female Spectator was published monthly for two years, becoming a voice for women during this period. It was followed by The Universal Magazine of Knowledge and Pleasure, which ran from 1747 to 1814. And then there was The Monthly Review, a monthly periodical that ran from 1749 to 1845. The Rambler, a bi-weekly periodical, ran from 1750 to 1752. It was followed by The Adventurer, another bi-weekly periodical, and The World, a weekly publication. The 18th century was indeed a vibrant period for British periodicals from The Connoisseur, The Critical Review, The London Chronicle, to The Annual Register. These publications were instrumental in disseminating information and shaping public opinion. Publications like The Ladies' Museum, Exeter Mercury, The Gospel Magazine, Theological Repository, Town and Country Magazine, The Ladies' Magazine, The Building Magazine, Wesleyan Methodist Magazine, The Arminian Magazine, The European Magazine and London Review. A New Review, Annals of Agriculture, The New Town and Country Magazine, The Analytical Review, The Botanical Magazine, The Observer, The Sporting Magazine, British Critic, Anthologia Hibernica, The Monthly Mirror, The Tribune, The Aberdeen Magazine, The Monthly Magazine, The Watchman, The Anti-Jacobin, The Anti-Jacobin Review, The Philosophical Magazine, The Asiatic Annual Register, Conjurer's Magazine and the Ladies' Monthly Museum, among others, contributed to the rich tapestry of 18th-century British print media. In conclusion, 18th-century British periodicals were a significant factor in shaping society. They served as platforms for discourse and debate, helping to shape public opinion and influence socio-political developments. These periodicals were the social media of their time, playing an instrumental role in shaping the British society of the 18th century.